A few years ago, I wrote uh, an article that was in the advisory about the uh, Native American portraits of um, um, Joe Beeler, uh, cowboy artist. And in there, I did some comparison with early, early medals. And I really became fascinated with uh, Edward Sawyer and uh, wanted to do a more uh, in-depth uh, study between him and Beeler. And I have a hard time writing about something unless I own some and have them in my hand and can study them. And so um, uh, I this this implies that, in fact, I bought some. And that is, in fact, the case. Uh, this was the first one that I got a couple of years ago. Uh, Neite was the son of Cochise, uh, fought with uh, Geronimo, and he was the last uh, chief of the... Uh, um, Apache before they were finally released uh, from prison. Uh, and this one was in the original box. Um, but uh, this summer I had another opportunity. So the first thing I want to go through is make one acknowledgement. Um, and um, helped me a lot. I, she, she sent me her um, uh, list of medals in the Massachusetts Society. And I want to say that she has a one paragraph biography of Sawyer. Now you can compare that to Dick Johnson and Mark Borchette who uh, wrote some biographies. Her one paragraph was the most accurate of anything that I've read. Um, and uh, what I've been concentrating now is going through and understanding Edward Sawyer before I can complete my uh, study. But. Dick Johnson said that there were none uh, of Sawyer's medals in private hands. And uh, he wrote that in 2010. Uh, and in 2017, after he wrote that, Bonhams had two uh, 70 millimeter uh, medals that they sold at auction. Then in 18, Heritage had 18 125 millimeter uh, um, medals that they sold at auction. Uh, and then I bought mine in, uh, let me collapse here, 2021 in Heritage. And um, 2022, uh, Heritage had another one for sale. Uh, and then in, um, let me look at the date again, in 2020, um, Stax Bowers had a single medal that they sold at auction that they said came from a California collection of nine uh, medals, but they just had the one at auction. As it ended up, uh, I bought seven of the other uh, medals from that California collection, and the eighth has been promised to me when the dealer finds it. The dealer um, uh, misplaced it. So let me quickly run through Sawyer to better understand who he was and what he was doing. He was born March 17th in 1876. He was born in Harvard, Illinois. That's where his great grandfather founded. It's a suburb north of Chicago today, sort of integrated in Chicago. But at that time, a good number of the people living uh, in that community were all related to him. His cousin, Eldridge Burbank, who was a noted painter of, of um, Native Americans, graduated the Chicago Academy of Design in 1874. It was Burbank's uncle, who was also Sawyer's granduncle. Um, he encouraged uh, Burbank to go into the Southwest. He really wanted him to paint Geronimo. Edward Everett Ayer, the the uncle was president of the Field Museum of Natural History. Burbank's uh, father was, I'm sorry, Sawyer's father was a gynecologist. Um, Sawyer's brother ended up being a painter. The, the family was all um, involved in sort of uh, upper social status, uh, college educated, a whole variety of stuff. It was kind of a wealthy uh, um, enclave outside of Chicago, and very many in the family um, had uh, art as a profession. Sawyer graduated from the Art Institute of Chicago, where he was influenced by Herman McNeil, 
Uh, Borchette says that he he believed that uh, Sawyer got his interest at the uh, World's Columbian Exposition, where um, McNeil uh, had a number of the artworks. Uh, and he may have influenced him at that time, but Sawyer, with his upbringing, was destined to be an artist. Uh, in 1899, he continued his training in Paris at the Academy Julian, and forgive my pronunciation of French. Um, uh, Johnson and uh, Borchette both say he was trained at the Beaux Arts. The Academy Julian was a school where you went if you wanted to go to Beaux Arts because it was very hard to get in, and they prepared you for that. Uh, one of the people that graduated from Beaux Arts about the time Sawyer started was Gutson Borglum, and uh, McNeil had done some time at uh, Academy Julian. And the Academy Julian had one other difference from Beaux Arts. They allowed women uh, into their school. And as I talk here in a little bit, uh, Sawyer's wife was a student at Academy Julian. Um, in 1904, he returns to America and, and accompanied Burbank to the American Southwest. Burbank painted. Sawyer sculpted. They did many of the same people. So you can look at Burbank's works and find other images besides what Sawyer sculpted. They started at Fort Yuma, uh, which is down on the California-Arizona border. And they later moved to Ganado and stayed at the Hubble Trading Post, where they had Navajos post for them. Today, if you visit the Hubble Trading Post, there is a cast portrait, the Navajo portrait over the entrance that was done by Sawyer, which he gave to the Hubble trading post. Now, Sawyer wrote that he returned to Paris uh, after his trip in 1904. And actually, he went to New Jersey first, where he got married. Uh, and then uh, he and his wife returned to Paris to make their home. And that's where they made their home for most of their life, but I'll get into a couple changes. In 1907, he returned to the U.S. He went to Agua Caliente, where he had Apaches sit for him. And these were actually probably not Apaches. In those days, Maricopa is on, uh, Agua Caliente is on the uh, Gila River. And uh, the natives there were called Yuma Apaches. Uh, they weren't, they were Maricopa and they were part of the Yavapai and a number of different tribes from um, uh, Phoenix south to the Gila River and into California and then down into uh, 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 Baja, California. And so only one of these um, images ended up in his later series and it's just called Apache and in fact, uh, it's likely not an Apache, it's likely a Maricopa Indian. In 1908, he writes, he returned to Paris and exhibited Indian heads at the Salon in Philadelphia in a 1910 at the ANS International Medallic Exposition. The medals he exhibited at the Salon were likely the same group that he exhibited at the Paris Musée de Luxembourg. And in 1910, they were donated to the Musée Orsay. And you can see them in their, um, their online uh, database. Five of those medals are not Native Americans. They are of friends and family, including his wife. And they are low relief, um, uh, Galvanos, you would call them. They're low-relief, single-sided metals. It was, if you read uh, Dick Johnson, he says all of his metals were produced by medallic art. Uh, and in fact, if they were produced, these early metals, if they were produced by malic, uh, malic art, it would have been Henry, Henry Wheel. Uh, and that's when he was working for the Dietz brothers. So they would not have been Technically, they were medallic art because the Deech brothers applied that name to the uh, work uh, that Wheel was doing with the gen. Yeah, 
I never say that word right, the Genvernet um, reduction machine. But John V.A. Likely John Sawyer, VA. Yeah, John V.A. Most likely Sawyer was casting his own artworks. And I know from a later newspaper article that he had the facility in his Paris studio uh, to produce uh, his own uh, cast works. Uh, in 1909, his son was born in Paris. And in 1911, he returns to the Southwest intending to produce a series of portraits of Native American Indian types. He wanted Indians to pose for him, but he was not producing a medal of an individual. He was producing an image of a type. So he sought out chiefs and, and people he thought of high stature. He tried to raise funds. Uh, but he couldn't raise funds, so he took out a personal loan uh, to fund this work. Uh, and this is the work that he describes in his American Journal of Numismatic article, My Work Among the Indians. What's interesting in reading the first part of that work in 1904, he has a description about living among the Yuma. Burbank, his cousin, his biography was written in 1944, and it was titled Burbank Among the Indians. And the description of his work among the Yuma, he actually um, uh, talked about being a little further north around uh, Needles uh, among the Mojave. And the description is basically the same, almost word for word, of what they were writing about. So I'm not sure where they were actually wording working, they probably moved back and forth looking for people to uh, sit for him. So he writes that he returned to Paris at the end of 1912 to complete his work in bronze. And Johnson writes that Sawyer deposited 31 bas-relief clay images uh, with Henry Wheel to make Galvano cast and ship them to the Smithsonian. At some point, Sawyer returns to New York, presumably to work on the production of the Galvanos. Uh, what's important is that when they talk about um, Sawyer's works, I'm really making a break between everything before his 1911 trip is, and what happens after 1911. What he did in 1911, he set out to produce a set of Native American portraits, um, and that's what I'm focusing on in my study. The best data indicates there were two sets produced in 125 millimeters and 10 sets produced in 70 millimeters. Uh, Johnson says there's no information as to how these might have been marketed. In July of 1913, so this is halfway through the year, he displayed a dozen American Indian heads at the International Exposition in Belgium. And the article says for a total of 27 pieces. So were all 27 pieces Indian heads from the 1913 production or only 12, sort of halfway through the year. And Sawyer did do um, other sculptures that he cast uh, and exhibited uh, over time. Sawyer returns to Paris in December 1913 and settled in New England in July 1914. His residence registration notes that December 1913, he had left America. And when he moved to England, he is crippled with rheumatoid arthritis and cannot walk without uh, crutches. That probably explains why his career seems to end uh, at that point, um, is that he's having uh, health problems. In 1923, he returns to France for health reasons. This is in his passport application, said he had been, had not left England to return to the United States after July 1914, and he passed away in France in 1932. His wife and son were with him. Uh, going through newspapers uh, around uh, 1914 um, and 1915, there's an obvious press release that's published in papers all around the country describing his medal series, 31 medals, uh, and it describes his casting setup in Paris, but he did not make the 31 medals in Paris. They were made by Medallic Art, 
that would have been uh, Wheel and Roni who were doing the um, uh, the Galvanos. Um, there's no mention of sales, but it does note that he deposited a set with the Smithsonian. So his pre-1913 medals were donated to the Art Institute of Chicago by its president, Charles Hutchinson, from looking at what he exhibited at the ANS and what the Chicago has. I believe this was the set of medals exhibited at the ANS. His Medals produced in 1913 were donated to the Art Institute of Chicago by his great uncle, Edward Ayer. The set in the ANS was donated by Robert Eidlitz. He was uh, a benefactor of the ANS and he was one of the founding members of the Saltus Award Committee, and Sawyer did receive the Saltus Award in 1931. Um, as I said, I believe the U.S. Mint uh, slash Smithsonian set was presumably donated by Sawyer. If you go out and do the research today, you see Edward um, Sawyer's medals in the National Portrait Gallery, and all the pieces pictured in there are attributed to the Whitney Museum of Western Art. Um, the Whitney Museum of Western Art was donated by the Medallic Art Company, and I believe they were a full set of the 125. But the Western art, there's a bronze plaque that's in their collection that talks about the 31 medals of um, Edward Sawyer of the Native American Indian portraits donated by the Medallic Art Company. Whether or not they have a 125 millimeter set and a 70 millimeter set, I don't know. I've written to them. I've received no response. The dealer that I bought my medals for when he was reaching uh, researching them called the Whitney Museum, and they said they couldn't find any of Sawyer's medals in their collection. So I'm I'm not sure, but they their 125 millimeter medals are the ones that are shown when you um, uh, look up Sawyer in the National Portrait Collection. There is a 70 millimeter set, a complete 31 set mounted in a book at the University of Nevada, Reno. It's in the Special Collections Library. I've written to them and they have no record of who donated the materials that is in their Special Collections Library from those early days. So we don't know whether they bought them, whether they were donated. The fact they're mounted in a book means they were probably donated by somebody. And that Anne uh, uh, nicely shared with me the historical, the Massachusetts Historical Society set of 31 medals was purchased directly from Sawyer in 1921. And that's in their records. And thank you, Anne, for the assistance you provided. And then I found that the California banker, Ed, Edgar Mills, when I said it was a California banker, um, it was a bank founded by his grandfather in San Francisco during the uh, Gold Rush era. Uh, and Edgar was one of the uh, directors um, in the 1920s. He lived in Sacramento. And when he died, there was a bequest of $35,000 to Sawyer. So I speculate, could um, Edgar Mills have owned a set of the medals. I haven't found any other way to connect him to Sawyer. So excluding the 18 125 millimeter Galvanos that Heritage sold, between museums and sales, I can account for one to two examples of individual medals in private collections. So I would say that would account for um, a total of at least seven sets, assuming the, the, the duplicates in private holdings come from two full sets that have been broken up over the years. And where this all started um, is the one set of eight medals um, two years ago that are in original boxes. Um, a dealer had one of them at the a a show. I talked to him afterwards, we exchanged email. He sent me pictures of all the eight medals in their boxes. Um, we dickered back and forth and I finally agreed to buy them for um, 
$17,000. And the next day, he sent me an email, said he changed his mind. He didn't want to sell uh, sell them. Now, his list of metals is in a set of comments um, on an article about the uh, uh, the Galvanos at Heritage was selling. And one of the people in there said that they had uh, five medals in their collection. And so I can account for there, the eight medals plus five is 13. Uh, and then the uh, Stax Bowers medal came from a California collection of nine medals. And that was the seven medals I purchased this summer. This is a picture yeah. of the California collection. It was exhibited in um, at the ANA in 2018, and the dealer that I didn't purchase it directly from him, I purchased it from an intermediary, bought this set in 2018. So I'm assuming this set is the California collection. Uh, and then just to quickly run through them, uh, this Yuma is uh, probably a Ketchum um, Yavapai uh, outside of Yuma, or given what Stoyer and um, uh, Burbank wrote, it could be a Mojave Indian just a little further up the river uh, from uh, Yuma. Uh, this is my favorite. Uh, my favorite of all of them, uh, a Navajo. This was done in 1904. Um, she was described as being a young basket weaver, and she's wearing typical Navajo kind of jewelry. And uh, each of these, I've shown the edge mark. All of the series of 70 millimeter um, uh, metals uh, from 1913 are copyrighted on the edge. And as you can see, they're a Galvano filled with lead and then later uh, copper plated. Uh, an Osage, my research, now I'm showing you metals that I haven't got deep into my research uh, in yet. So I'll just run through the rest of them quickly. Uh, a Kickapoo, South Cheyenne, and again, typical jewelry for the Cheyenne and Arapaho. And I'll close with Neche. So now you know I have two Neche medals, and that's how I know there are at least two sets that have been uh, broken up. And I have a picture Neche after Neche and Geronimo uh, surrendered. Uh, they were sent to a prison camp in Florida, then moved to Alabama. And while in Alabama, Neche and a number of the other warriors joined the army. Um, they, they weren't allowed to go to war, but they had army commissions and so forth. He's wearing his sharpshooter medals in this. And then when they were moved to Fort Sill, uh, they became a, a Apache uh, scouts in the army. And when he sat for Sawyer, uh, he's wearing his uh, military uh, uniform. When he sat for Burbank to be... Um, uh, to be painted, he was also wearing his uh, military uniform. 